Hey, I'm Feedback Gaming, and this is Hot Survive 4. Time for another edition of every single click video, or every time I click, or every time I press my mouse. You know, I'll think of a better name for this series at some point. So I'm from the UK, I'm British, and I live in the UK. And you know what gets me the most patriotic? That's right, Hot Survive 4, the United Kingdom. 1930s UK has got some interesting things like pacifism and King George deciding he wants to marry an American woman. Ugh. Oh. The drama and the beginning of the end of the British Empire. Oh, but not in this game. Anyway, regular historical, off we go. Hey, but first, this video is sponsored by Epic War Thrones. Epic War Thrones is a strategy game on mobile. It's about warfare, it's about battles, it's about conquest. But how will you do that? You can connect your lands to form a massive wall with your allies to work together against the enemy's advance. With the five different kinds of weathers over a real live weather simulation, 20 different kinds of lands over a 3D terrain map where you can develop your strategies. Food, troops, money, all resources can be obtained freely. Reject, pay to win. You can even get resources you want by plundering. Power to the player. The game has got a Far Eastern Asian aesthetic to it where you can command legendary generals each general with their own personality and behavior to lead into battle. It's a game where you have to work together with your allies to overcome your enemies, working together with tactics and strategy to dominate the enemy's capital city. Remember, only one alliance will survive. At this point, what are you waiting for? The link is in the description below. Install the game and join the battlefield. I'll see you there. Epic War, Rome. So, what is an every single click video? It's a video where I show 99.9% .9 of the clicks I make in Hearts of Iron 4 so you can play along with me and hopefully have the same kind of game as me. Hopefully. Today's video is going to focus on making some badass British tank divisions and also spamming a lot of fighters. Oof, so many fighters. More fighters than you're probably even going to use. That's right, it's one of those games again. So first of all, we're going to hold shift left click and click on unassigned division. This will select every single division in the game, 36 to be exact. Uh, we will assign them to an army by right clicking on the army at the bottom. Press C, which is a fallback line, and then assign them to here. The beauty of doing it this way is that all the divisions will move to this fallback line. You don't have to manually move them one by one. So even if they're abroad, that's right, in Africa, or I don't know, in Malaysia, or even in Hong Kong, they will automatically move in that direction towards that fallback line like magic. Also, we're going to press F2 and shift and left click on each of these fleets. One, two, three, four. Then right click on the reserve fleet. It says, do you want to do this? Of course we do. And then you're going to click on the front icon here to select all of your fleets and press G. G is merge. Now all the fleets will merge up to a massive fleet death stack, which used to be the old mess in Hearts of Iron 4. Can anyone remember that? Having this complex navy of screening ships, submarines, and capital ships. But at the end of the day, you never really took advantage of them because they were just a big fat stack of ships that you would stack up to the clouds. That's right, that used to be a thing. Research-wise, we are going to focus on industry, as you usually do. And you're also going to work on your construction, as you usually do. And we're going to focus on some tanks. In this case, the Matilda. The Matilda. It's side skirts. Hidden tracks. You can't see them. Oh, so shy. And we're also going to focus on a lot of planes. So in this case, we're going to get the Hurricane to begin with. Also, F3 brings you into the air map mode. And we will select some of them on land to begin with. Holding Shift and drawing a box. And then you can draw like a massive box. Uh, if you've selected only land aircraft, it won't grab the ones that are on carriers. You don't want to grab the ones on carriers because you have to reassign them, which is just an absolute pain in the ass. You don't want to do that. There you go. That's all of them. We'll move them to the UK and then we can exercise them, merge them and customize them as we please. The first national focus we're going to go for is limited rearmament, which gives civilian factories that will kickstart our industry. Speaking of civilian factories, that's what we're also going to build. So free civilian factories, you can see here, civilian factories and build them in areas that have the high infrastructure. Nine, that's very good. Eight, eight, eight. That'll do for now. That was another eight there in Lancashire. We'll go for that. If you hold shift and left click once, it will fill all of the building slots up to the maximum amount for that building that you've selected. In this case, if you can see here, there's five building slots. I hold shift and left click on Lancashire and it builds five. That's right. Well, five in the queue anyway. We'll build them later. All right, military factories. So first of all, we don't need light tanks. That's fine. We are going to make fires. That's fine. Uh, all these ships. Ugh. Now, if you wanted to be very picky, you could select the ones that are partially constructed and just finish them off. And there are quite a few, so it is kind of a waste. But you know what? I'm in a bit of a hurry. And uh, I like convoys. Who doesn't like convoys, right? We don't need as much artillery, so just the one will do. Uh, AA is just fine, so we'll just have the one of those as well. 
Single armored car just for the extra reconnaissance, always useful. And for the most part, we have quite a few mills left actually. So I guess we can go for guns and later on we can move that towards fighters if need be. So just to give you the heads up, we're going to be focused on 40 width, heavy tank divisions. They're going to do most of the legwork. And then we're going to use a lot of planes to get full air superiority. One other thing we're going to do is select this army of 32 divisions and convert them all to basic infantry. What's the easiest one? So in this case, we've got garrisons. So we can change them all to garrisons. Just a simple infantry template that we can exercise indefinitely. And we gain a little XP from that. Every bit of XP we can get early game is worth it because it means we can build a bigger and fatter division. Fat is where we're aiming for. Girth and fat for the win. All right, we're going to go five speed now. And I think we are good to go. We might build an agency a little bit later on, but for now, we don't need it. And all the divisions are moving. Five speed for the win. King George is dead. What a terrible shame. So this is a venting game that makes you lose a little bit of stability. But if you do manage to sort out the monarchy and their problems, your stability will just bounce back anyway. Unless you go the monarchist path, which we're not going to be doing today. This is mostly going to be in a historical game. Defeating Germany is our number one goal. So the divisions are all coming from abroad and coming to the UK and we're exercising them up. We are lacking guns on the limit, but if you hover over the logistics, you see how many days until that surplus will be filled. In this case, 60 days, roughly, and we're producing a lot of guns because of that. So that's all good. And of course, look at this. XP. XP for these divisions. I'm going to try and get as much XP as early as possible. Well, as early as possible. Rhineland has been militarized. Oh no, what a terrible shame. And we will help the Turks in their issues with the Bosporus. Our initial plan is to try and rush the Crusader. So in this case, we are going to go for motorized army and the straight away go for armored technology. You could argue this is not the best use of my time early game, but I want to try and get that medium one tank as quickly as possible and produce a good number of them. So we've at least got one or two good 40 with tank divisions before the war begins. The Turkish compromise was successful and demilitarization of the world has, well, been 100% complete. Rhineland and Bosporus, 100% de, well, remilitarized. Is that a good thing? Should that be happening? Oh, no. All right, so we've got all our planes here. So if we go in F3 for the air map mode, or you can select this button in the top right here, which is, I believe, also L. Okay, well, there you go. There's lots of hotkeys I wasn't aware of. Hold shift, drag a box over here, press G to merge them all up. In this case, we'll change this to 400. Because the deal is, we're going to change it to 400, and then we're going to press, uh, I think it's D to split. Yep. You know, I press these hotkeys, and I don't even know what button I'm pressing. It's just muscle memory for me. Well, there you go. Anyway, change that to 400 too. D to split, D to split. So therefore, that's the, all the air wings you're going to be using. And you know what? Now I think about it, and now remember, we'll have one cast just to have a trickle amount of cast uh, into our army. You don't want to use a lot of cast, just a few cast, which is also useful naval striking, as well as helping our tanks later in the game. Trust me, you'll see. It'll make sense later on. Just wait. Oh, I also forgot about motorized. That's going to be a problem. Oh, one motorized. There we go. Do you know what I've got to love for? And that's PP. Silent Workhorse will pay itself back, I believe, in two years in game resulting more political power gained over the long run. Plus, we've also got Stanley Baldwin, which also gave us a little bit cheaper cost for political power and more political power. Political power, political power, political power. Lots of political power. Unlike France, we are not politically paralyzed. We have the ability to do politics. Yay. All right. Our planes are here right now. I'm going to hold shift and left click on pilot exercises. This will exercise them to level three. Therefore, they will gain a bigger bonus in combat because they are exercised. Be aware, though, you will lose a few of them to accidents. It happens. And because we held down shift, when they get to level three training, they will stop exercising. You don't want to keep exercising because you're going to end up losing more planes, which is not good. And also, I suppose you could continuous exercise if you wanted to get more XP, but exercising planes to get XP is a really bad way of getting air experience. Trust me, getting into dogfights and actually fine is the way forward. Dispersed industry, diversifying, diversifying everything. Disperse industry because we're going to be playing a long game and upgrading our technology and building lots of military factories. And plus, we're a major power, so disperse for the win. If anyone disagrees, they're just wrong, okay? T say in the comments, if you disagree, you're wrong. Motorized army is complete. We're going to go with the Royal Tank Regiments. You know, the beauty that we've gone for motorized is we've actually got a bonus for mechanized, so we could actually rush mechanized right now. So that's a possibility too. So make those tanks even more girthier. Girth for the win. That is probably going to be the moral of this video. We're going to be talking about girth constantly. Remember, guys, it's just a Hoi 4 game. Don't take it too seriously, okay? Just relax. The Hawker Hurricane is complete. And now we're going to focus on strategic destruction, which gives bonuses such as multi-altitude flying and air superiority and a lot of juiciness. There we go. Air superiority. I'm going to focus more on construction. Also improve machine tools too. Forget that production. Flying high. Oh, no. Political monarchies and all that hoo-ha. Yeah, just go with the top one because that's the historical option. The other options below allow you to go with the monarchist path, which we're not going to be doing today. 
We can modify the government because we've got enough political power once again. What are the options? There doesn't appear to be any good options right now, so I'm just going to sit on that political power. The King Edward has abdicated and was stable, maybe. Uh, we can work on hurricanes now. And we can start focusing less on guns. And now more of them will be assigned on to the fighters. Ah, it's all part of the plan, boys. So we've got more than 150 political power now, so we can make a better choice and decision. Early mobilization for the win. But there is a chance when we get Neville Chamberlain, we're going to lose some war support. I think what we're actually going to go for is the medium tank designer. Just to make tanks research quicker and gain more reliability and soft attack. That is going to be a long-term gain. We will take advantage of that because you remember, you have to get that before you get the medium tank. It's important you get it in that specific order. So before you research the tank, get the tank designer. Does that make sense? Okay. Royal tank regiment is done. So now we start researching a tank. So we don't need the improved machine tools immediately. And then we go for the crusader immediately. Yeah, this is way ahead of time, but we need to get medium tanks out as early as possible. Trust me, it's all part of the plan. It'll make sense when you see it. The shadow scheme is possible now. What? Neville Chamberlain was not fully invested into appeasement? Madness. Remember to do this one now because your world tension is 5% and there's a chance the world tension will drop a little bit between the times between Rhineland and Anschluss. Just be aware of that because you might drop to 4% and therefore you can't select this option. So make sure you get it now. Okay, get it now. Get it now. All right. With 150 political power, we can go for a submarine, which make planes. Can you believe this country invented the English language? <laughs> anyway, remember, you have to get this before you research the plane. So when we go for Spitfire, we'll take advantage of that bonus. Disperse 1 is complete. Disperse 2. And don't forget to build some more civilian factories on the more key areas. In this case, London. And the rest we'll not worry about for now. Shadow Scheme is done. Industrial effort is good. Because this will give us bonus for more industry. Portugal would like to purchase some British ships. Sure, why not? We gain a civilian factory for that. Going to continue down our research for our air doctrine. In this case, we'll go for ground support. We've got another 150 political power. And we'll go for industrial concern. This will give more research for the industry we're focusing on and we are putting a lot of time and effort into construction and dispersed industry. It, trust me, it'll all make sense when we get further in. Okay, we can go for a search slot. All the military factories, both are very, very good. Oh, we got the option to go for more stability by reinforcing the empire. Don't need the stability because we're going to gain a lot more of that later on. And in this case, we'll focus on the military factories because we are going to be pumping out a lot of cruisers when they're researched. Mobile warfare. Yep, that's the thing. And uh, Britain's going to be doing it. Britain invented Blitzkrieg. Did you not know that? Well, you've learned something new. Historical game, by the way. Military factories is done. And time for a research slot. Disperse 2 is done. Time for Disperse 3. Got another 150 political power. Let's go for free trade. Now, this is a little bit late. Then you should go for free trade. And in a single player game, free trade doesn't benefit you as much as a multiplayer game. In multiplayer, all the allies, all the Axis, will, will trade with themselves internally therefore balancing the economy. In single player, you're relying on the AI to trade with you. They don't always choose you, so just be aware of that. Exporting 298 steel, and no one is trading with us. Boo. France, we'd like to join the Allies. You know what? Welcome aboard. All right, so we need a little bit of aluminium because we're losing it. Trust me, I know there's people in the comments that are going to be screaming right now, saying, why are you doing this, Dave? This is a bad mistake. Do not do this, blah, blah, blah. Trust me, it is a whole part of the plan. Short-term gains will move off free trade later on. But for now, let's focus on it and let's get lots and lots of fighters. So the fighters now have trained to level three, but they've lost experience because new fighters have been added to the pool. As you can see, new fighters are adding now and the XP is ticking down because new fighters aren't as experienced as the ones that have been exercised. We've done this part of the focus tree now. So now we're going to go off reinforce the empire for a little bit of stability and gain a little bit of research. I'm going to go for construction three, two as well. We're also going to boost for construction three, which is ahead of time. British industry peaking, peak Britain. Also, I'm going to select one of these air wings that aren't complete and duplicate another one. So we'll spawn another 200 air wing size and exercise it to level three. And see, all part of the plan working smoothly. Stanley Baldwin has resigned. Oh, no. And now we have the appeaser, Mr. Chamberlain. So this is the reason why we didn't go for early mobilization. We'd have to deal with a crisis. We'd have to deal with potential strikes. So unfortunately, stepping up to early mobile on is just a waste of political power. Right now, we don't have anything to spend our political power on. So what we could do is either go refuge for scientists. Yeah, we'll just do that. Now, we do lose a bit of stability with this. But trust me, the UK focus has lots of stability bonuses. So we'll get it all back in the long run. So here we go. Production, production, construction, mediums, working on our air. Good, good, good. All right, world tension is spiked right now. So we can go for general rearmament. And we will. Still going to progress down our strategic destruction because we need to get the bonuses for our fighters. Our fighters need to be state of the art and they definitely will be. The Crusader is done. Let's make some medium tanks, boys. And let's not go half measures either. We are going to go all out with the mediums. Here we go. And oop. And there we go. 
So we don't need as much aluminium anymore, but we do need the tungsten, which we'll get from our puppet nation of Malaya. Remember, if you do trade with your, one of your puppet nations, in this case, Malaya, you'll get 80 of their tungsten and it will only cost one civilian factory. So what a steal. Steal? No, it's tungsten. Ah, look at this produce those beautiful medium tanks. And we're going to focus a little bit on mechanical computing to gain the extra research bonus. We're stacking a lot of research to begin with, lots of production to begin with, and then we'll move everything towards production of our fighters and our tanks. We are getting there. All right, world tension now is a lot higher, and uh, we're about to get Anschluss from Austria. So I think we're getting close to the point where we can start to mobilize more. Early mobilization requires 15 war support, and Mr. Chamberlain is reducing us by 5%. Oh, damn you, Chamberlain. Another bit of political power, get refuge for the Italian scientists. Once again, stacking that research. If you hop into your research and you hover over this number here in the top right, you can see the bonuses you're stacking. As you can see, electronic and mechanical engineering, free trade, and the refuge for the German and Italian scientists. Einstein has arrived. So, 40 with tank divisions. What's the issue with that? That's right, supply is always an issue. So, logistics for the win. General rearmament is done. Now we need to focus really heavily on aircraft. In this case, we need to get this one. Air rearmament is required. At this point in time, there's not a lot to research. So, we'll go for a bit of excavation to take advantage of all the resources we've got and the fact that we're on free trade as well. Don't forget to forget about your planes. Air rearmament, in this case, exercise a new air wing and make, to get it level make sure they get trained to level three. Fighter Command is next. There we go. World tension has spiked. I think China and Japan are at it. Yes, they are. So we can send an attache, which we will do, which gives us loads of war support. And now we can hop up to early mobilization. Ah, it's just that easy. And the PP is here. Yugoslavia would request airplanes. Of course you can to lose some consumer goods for us. And oh my goodness, so many factories. So we're in 938 now, right now, so it is time to think about working more on our own military factory. So we'll wait one more, and then there we go. All those are military factories. Remember, I held down shift, and that means it tries to build as many military factories as possible. So as you can see, when it's finished building these, it'll move on to the military factories right underneath them. Just that easy. The fighter command is here, and we've got Anschluss as well. Fighters, fighters, fighters. The Spitfire. This was also pretty good. Reduces the cost of fighters. That means you can outproduce the Germans, even though the Germans might have more military factories after they capitulate France, which more than likely they will. Next up, interception versus air superiority efficiency. Air superiority efficiency is very, 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 very good. So please get that. Now, the Japanese faction will protest that you've sent an attache to China. Just always say no. You will lose some political power, but trust me, it's worth it in the long run. You're getting more support, and you're also getting lots of lots of experience. Trust me, it is worth it. Also going to go for engineers, too. It's worth it because you'll lose less medium tanks. And in the long run, the more mediums you've got, the more tank divisions you'll have overall. The more tank divisions, the more overall damage you're going to have. Right, we've got a lot of experience right now. Oh, my God, it's ticking up so much. Remember, this is a combination of training these guys indefinitely, as well as the attache in China. So... Let's build a better tank division. In this case, that will not do. So in this case, we have to make a brand new one. New division, medium tanks, medium, medium, medium. And then we'll start off by popping on loads of motorized. So you can see it's only a partial division, way far away from the final template we're actually going to go for. And that is very expensive, 65. Is there a possible way we can make that cheaper somehow by using an existing template? Maybe we could use this infantry. Do we add on mediums? Nah, this is not going to be any cheaper. This is a waste of time. So I'm probably better off working with almost a brand new division. Maybe the best way of doing this is to add mediums onto this infantry division. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So garrison, duplicate this division, add on a bunch of medium tanks. Medium, medium, and medium. It's going to cost us 60. Medium again. That looks pretty good. I like that. Then we'll train a few of these. I think with 40 with tank divisions, the minimum amount to actually have an impact on the front line is three. So we're going to train exactly three. And you can see we're lacking a lot of tanks. So we're going to have to make a lot of tanks to make up the shortfall here. But as you can see, we are producing lots of military factories. So that is going to help us out in the long run. I'm going to start working on some of the attack bonuses, such as interwar artillery, as working on some of these ones as well. Aircraft production group is complete. Now what we can do is do service overseas and colonial elite gain some more chunky bonuses. Also, war industrialist right now is really important. 10% extra construction for our mills is very, very important. As you can see right now, filling out these building slots incredibly quickly so we can start building further northwards into the seven infrastructure areas of the UK. You're protesting my attache of China? I don't care. All right, we are really pumping out the medium tanks now. 
We've got at least 16 assigned. Keep pumping them. Keep going. Keep going. We'll add an extra military factory into cast just to have a little bit more cast once again. Don't forget, keep producing fires. Keep producing fires. Keep producing those fires. Okay, I think it's time now to introduce the motorized. 35. Yeah, it's all the XP gone. A little bit more motorized. Yep, working on the soft attack. Good, good, good. Courage, colonial elite. Good, good, good. More excavation. And uh, anyone trading with us? No. Oh my god, nobody wants to trade with us. Bit of rubber, Canada. Wow. Okay, that free trade is a complete waste of time. Well, you learn a lesson here, boys. Oh, look at those military factories just pumping them out. And check out all the fighters. Good. Doctrines. Progress. Don't spend your XP. We need to put that into a fighter when we get the Spitfire when it's done. Only 54 days. Right now, Germany is taking out Czechoslovakia. Appeasement, you say? Yes. Fortunately, we are. The most historical game. Now, when it comes down to focuses, there's not really a lot of options available, unfortunately. So, in this case, we go off Steady As You Go, which is the historical British path, which gives stability. You don't really need a lot of stability for historical Britain. But, the options there, eh? Tank is on its way, making it bigger and bigger and bigger. More, more. And that's right, more. Another medium. And is this the 40 width? Oh, we're so close. 36 width. We are going to need signing one extra into motorized so we are going to need a little bit more excess motorized to get this done so focus on production again more soft attack soft attack air power air power and we will start rushing the next medium tank as well oh and portugal would like to buy some more ships you know what why not next up we deploy these divisions they are trained relatively we'll exercise them some more now the most ideal way to exercise these divisions is to make a 40 width division and then convert them over but the problem is we don't have enough xp to do that so we have to work with what we've got in this case we've got three divisions we'll sign it to a new army by right clicking on the army in the bottom and then we'll move them to i don't know somewhere in africa here once again fallback line and i hold control to assign it you hear this Signing onto that fallback line. And we're also going to rush for the spiteful three. Is that a good idea? Yeah, why not? So, Spitfire is complete. We're going to play defensively, so we're going to give them a nice, girthy engine. Fighter, boom, go, off we go. So, we're signing most of them into fighter now. And we'll pop you there. And then all the excess will be fed into fighter two. So, all the new military factors will be added on to medium tanks. And then be filtered down to fighter twos when the time comes. And now we need to make this 40 width. Remember, I told you this is going to be a 40 width, so it is going to be a 40 width division. The 10 XP, please. Oh, yep, 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 there we go. And then we'll add on the maintenance next and exercise you to level three. Off you go. All right, the time being, we don't really need to exercise these guys anymore in the UK, so the XP we've gained from this was definitely worth it. We probably gained at least 100, but we'll keep these guys just as home defense. All right, what can we do here then? So select a guy who's going to be good on the attack. He's good five attack, looks good. And a field marshal in this case. We've got a choice here between defense or, nah, Montgomery. Logistics wizard is just too strong. I love it too much. And it is strong. It's worth it. It's like we're going to need more motorized by the looks of things. So we'll assign on two more. And don't forget, keep training more air wings. More, 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 more air wings. Go and exercise to level three. Time to start rushing for the Cromwell. This big lad. Turret upgrade. Looks grey in the icon, but looks green in the 3D model. Nice. Bit of air experience here from Air Defense. He came max anti-air in the south of England too. Is it worth it? Not really, but the air XP is nice. All right, uh, so we've got political power. So we'll go for the theorist. Go for limited conscription. And then top that off as well. And the top that off as well. We'll go for the army offense expert. Right, it's really important we exercise these guys to level three because that 25% bonus on top of the existing stats for the tank is going to make this tank really strong. So do that. Keep improving the tank division. So in this case, we'll add on some AA and then we'll add on armored car reconnaissance. A little bit of aluminium from USA. And then continue to work on the soft attack. Right now, we feel really ahead of schedule. I'm, I'm really liking the way we are at the moment. Uh, we've also got a Navy too. I guess you can exercise the Navy to level three as well. Just hold shift, left click on Naval Exercises. The bonuses you get for level three are pretty good. See if we can see one of them. Sign an Admiral and level three gives us loads of bonuses. So it's definitely worth it. We're not really gonna be using our Navy. And for the most part, against the AI, the Navy you start with is it's pretty good. Final upgrade, logistical bombing for the Air Doctrine. For now, anyway. Radar, air experience. Yeah, that's kind of worth it. Otherwise, you can issue gas mask for the stability. Remove national spirit of war to end all wars. Nah. Uh, more air experience here for radar, so go for that. We're not really investing in radar, but it's an option anyway. And we're about to run out of fuel, so in this case, let's send the guys back. 
get a little bit of fuel just to fill the stockpiles and also to keep the tanks exercising. Can we make the tanks even better? Come on, you can always have better tanks. Logistics and support artillery. There we go, maxed out. And there we go. Level three trained tank divisions, all ready for combat. Train a few more tank divisions? Yeah, sure, why not? Upgrade my guns, got the stems now. Oh, here we go, lack of resources is kicking in. Time to get our free trade is very, very soon. But we'll keep that economy going for the time being. Someone say more fighter planes? Yes. And also we need more motorized as well. All right. Home defense, the historical path. All right. Time for an intelligence agency. Create the agency. Italy has joined the Axis. Oh, no. Three more tank divisions. What we could do is make a girthy, almost 40 worth infantry just to exercise into. There we go. What we'll do is consolidate a few of them just to merge them up. So what we're just doing is using a reserve infantry is just a fallback that we can exercise level three and then convert to the tanks. For the most part, we're really not going to take advantage of these ones being trained. We'll exercise the infantry and then convert them over. Issue gas masks. Oh no. Will this be a war with mustard gas and chemical warfare? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, I'm leading more towards maybe not. Loads of places to build military factories and we're just going to slap them down. There we go. All right. Spies. They're a big thing, right? Localized training centers and go for a German spy. Pop that into Germany. Build intelligence on the Germans. <gasps> Poland! No! Guarantee your independence. It is war. Join the war. Off we go. It starts. We can invite them to the allies. All right, first thing we get to do is we get to move the tank divisions over and immediately we can start pushing into the Italians. The Italians might be a little bit nervous to join the war when they've got troops on their front line in Africa. So I want to keep them back behind the front line. Then the minute they declare war on me, I'll just sweep into Libya and just eat them all up. All right, I'm done with the doctrines for now. There are some bonuses at the bottom here, such as air superiority 15%. That one's pretty good. Uh, the other ones, though, aren't as worth it. So you can branch out now into a lot of different research options. Uh, whatever does you fancy, really. In this case, we'll go for an improved computing machine. Why not? So I'm going to go with the initial planning. I'm going to make a foil with infantry, and I'm going to cancel all the training of the tanks. And I'll just, once again, I'll convert these girthy infantry divisions into the tanks that I need. I'll do that when I need them. Oh, a double agent from Germany. Yes, I'll take that. And we'll get six upgrades so we can get the plus one spy. In this case, we'll go for S-pills next. The allies would like to all join the war. Yeah, not call them all in. And like to send me lots of lend -lease. You know what? Why not? Because we're using all our guns. Fair enough. All right, right now, I am stressing my economy out to a massive degree, and I've got lots of military factories, so I don't need that many anymore. So what I'm going to do is just diversify a little bit, but go into civilian factories as well. Here, here, all the 70 areas. Just split things up a little bit more. Remember, you've got to balance things. The more military factories you get, the more production you get. But the downside is with the production, you lose resources. You need to import the resources, which cost civilian factories. So you always need to balance civilian factories and military factories to get that sweet spot. Right now, I can feel the strain as we're importing more. So I'm going to build more civilian factories to balance things out. And you're probably screaming at your screen right now saying, just get on free trade, Dave. Why won't you get on free trade? No, I love my free trade, okay? Total mob is next. And then we'll go for women in the workforce. And some war bonds. You know, why not? Poland has capitulated. All right, let's move our air wings over. So we'll move our group over to here. S to split, to split them up. And then we'll send them all over to the Bellalux region. Air superiority and close air support to maximize their effectiveness. And we'll have one air wing somewhere here just to hold out. Because it looks like they're trying to bomb us. Yeah, they are. What I'm going to do now is grab my fleet and then put them on uh, strike force here, here. And no, actually, there, I'll be fine. Uh, what this is going to do probably not what the devs intended but you gain naval supremacy even though you're not actively in these air zones just that your capital ships are projecting a naval power into these zones what that does is it means it prevents the ai will go here too they'll need to get naval supremacy and because we've got so many ships not likely oh then least thank you i'll take the land lease from sweden neutral sweden neutral i don't think so uh the military training act which removes the war to end all wars yeah why not hey italy you could have joined the war hmm? Hmm? italy I'm also going to assign more air crews, which gives a little bit more air efficiency, which is good if you're traveling over a long range. If I wanted to, I could base my planes over here. I just don't want to micro them. The truth is, I'm playing this historically. I want to focus more on uh, fending after France falls. Okay, going to assign more onto close air support. Once again, just to mix up the damage I'm doing. I've got lots of fires right now. I don't really need that many. And, uh, oh my goodness, we've got so many medium tanks. Is that a problem? Do I, can you ever have too many medium tanks? Hmm. Anyway. Full 40 width infantry, and I'm gonna press V, which is the garrison area. Oh, it's not garrison, it's called airy defense. Oof. And I'm gonna assign them over this region. Will I get a naval invasion? Very unlikely. But hey, we're playing it safe, eh? And assign them all off apart from holding the naval bases. 
They'll go control B. They will railroad to their front line. Off they go. And now they are going to defend. We'll assign a guy who's got good defense. Uh, yeah. Keep working on your upgrades for your spy agency. You need six upgrades. So we'll go for interrogation techniques. And you can see our planes now are fighting in this area. And this is useful because we're going to get loads of air experience from this. Meaning we can upgrade our fighters even more. Engine and range is essential for what we're doing right now. And there we go. Okay, we have way too many medium tanks right now. So I think I'm just going to take off 15. I only have 15 left. The rest can be signed on to our fighters. Sort out my trade. If you just want to click on this button here to sort out trade. I usually don't talk about trade, actually. I'll talk about it a bit more now. In this case, if you select the country you want to trade with, usually the one at the top is usually the best. If it's in the allies, you're doing okay. And then you hit this button, it'll just assign the right amounts. In this case, 13. That means 13 aluminium has been traded in. And that means we're not suffering from any penalty for our production of our fighters. Goody, goody gumdrops. Chamberlain has resigned. And now we have the British Bulldog. Getting us more war support. I think we're already maxed on war support. So will that make any difference? Nope. Italy. Are you going to join the war? Huh? Huh? I think they're too scared of the French on the Alps. France, too strong. Denmark has fallen. Which usually is not normally the case. Normally the lowlands fall first. Army department and we can go for a spy master and gain an absolute ton of spies. You gain so many spies as Britain due to the allies. Election contested. Just go for the ones that give the bonuses. Losing a little bit of democracy. Not a big deal. We're gonna go for mechanized now. Luxembourg has fallen. They're actually struggling to get to the lowlands here, but man, we're losing so much cast. Do we assign more mills onto our cast then? Looking at upgrading for our support companies, for our tank division. So logistics is always good. Maintenance is always good. Reconnaissance, always good. And that's pretty much the British focus tree done, which is kind of sad in a way. Uh, the historical path isn't that interesting. Well, extra factory output and construction speed for military factories. Stack it even higher. How high can it go? Okay, so this is what I was talking to you about. So these divisions here are fully trained and they are 40 with divisions. So the beauty of this is let's say I want let's select four, five, six, seven. Convert them to tank from here. And that means they'll lose less experience, which means they'll be trained level twos. And they'll also in this case have partial amount exercise. So it just saves you a little bit of time when converting them over. And then we'll exercise these officially to level three. Italy, you have joined the war. Okay, unleash the micro. So we're going to push directly on top of them here. They're going to try and engage us here and have absolutely no joy. And initially just sliding into Tripoli. One tank pushing downwards, another one pushing downwards. And at this point, yeah, it's not looking too good. Luxembourg. Oh, the Netherlands has fallen. So they are breaking through. And then we set a front line here. Z front line. And X is an offensive order. Tell these guys to attack. And then just push out. And we might as well just clear up behind us so they don't encircle us from behind. That would be bad. A little bit of fuel from America. Just a little bit. I have a feeling my fleet may have moved. Is that why we lost all our fuel? No, yes, no. No, oh, need a bit more fuel, I guess, then. It's all these tanks and all these planes, there's just so many. So the spy, make sure it's a German spy so we build a network faster. I never really explained that. But yeah, the reason why you assign double agents, which are German nationally, as spies instead of Germany, is they build intelligence networks quicker. So this percentage here, that's the size of the intelligence network. In this case, it'll build it significantly quicker. I think it's 25% or 50% quicker. It's definitely worth it. Hold a blood, toil, tears, and sweat speech. Lose some political power to gain some more stability and more support. And we're also at max stability, so it made any no difference whatsoever. Making these speeches completely useless. Yay. Anyway, regardless, we are breaking through. And same again. Make sure you don't push into these divisions. Just try and get around the back of them. Oh, no. Italy. Italy. And push into here. You're going to push forward. Oh, and unfortunately... You've just lost some more divisions. Remember, go around the back of them. Don't fight them. Just go around the back. And then you've encircled a bunch of divisions. Oh, look, you're trying to encircle me. You fool. Italy, not too smart. Big heavy with 40 medium British tank. All right, the boys have moved forward. And Libya has been completely liberated. I uh, can't say the same for Egypt, though. <laughs> All right, put them on aggressive and just send them on their way. You can actually just beeline to the ports. Tobruk, Benghazi. Off you go. When the agents get captured, immediately rescue them. Prepare and commence immediately. Just rescue. Trust me, it's worth it. It's worth it. Oh, no. That's a terrible shame. Oh, we're actually struggling to break that mountain there. The option for nationalizing Mexican oil. If you want to declare war in Mexico, you can do it. Just go for the middle option. That's the historical option. Cromwell is complete. Time for the comet and also time for upgrades. Produce our new shiny tanks. Yeah, that's right. Tanks don't work very well in mountains. Well, you now you know. And is it gone? gone and at the same time we can make an offensive order 
and just push and take all back this land inside of Egypt. Trust me, don't need to defend this land. The Italians are so weak. You don't have to deal with them. Trust me, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Malaya is about to become a puppet. Wow, we don't want that to happen. So we probably should build inside them a little bit. Um... So what I did there is I held down shift and hold down control doing two things. One, it pushed it to the top of the priority list. And also it filled out the maximum number of infrastructure. So this will get a little bit ticking autonomy towards Malaya. It'll stop them from going from integrated puppet to puppet, meaning we get less of their resources. We have to pay more for their resources. And we need their resources because look, they got all the rubber and the tungsten. Trust me, we need that. Logistics 2 is done. Going for reconnaissance 2. Big tank boyos are pushing in. In fairness, we're just going to wrap around the back of them. Wrap around the back. And wrap around there. And Belgium's gone. This is an incredibly late capitulation from Hoi 4 standards of France. But there we go. That's perfect. Good. Okay, I think it's time to bring the other boyos over. And we're going to have to be very careful because we're going to have to use our ships to defensively bring them over. Take them all to Cornwall. So I press B to railroad, and then I right click. That means they're going to move really fast, even though they lose all their organization. Uh, then I'm going to right click here, and they're going to move here. Now, there's a high chance they'll get intercepted, and we'll lose convoys. If we lose convoys, we're losing thousands of tanks. Kid you not. So what we're going to do is select our fleet, click Convoy Escort, hold shift, and right click the areas we want to disable. And the areas we're going to move to, these ones, we're going to Convoy Escort. Okay, the mechanizer is done now. So what we can do is mech, 415, off you go. Put a little bit of steel, move all the boils over, get here, we'll exercise them up, and then we'll, we'll push all the way in. So fall back land again, assign them here, control B, move them on the way, exercise to level three, they'll reinforce, and goody goody gum drops. Okay, we don't need to worry about the fleet now, so we'll send them back, and that'll get most of our fuel back. Still currently uh, intercepting submarines. And there we go, we're getting fuel back again now. Fall of Paris. And France has fallen, and the tanks have arrived. So, so I right click on the trash can here, and it gives me the option to cancel the order. So, I'll just show an example. Right click, I issue and cancel the orders. Yes, okay. What you're going to do now is I'm going to push him just with a solid right click to steam my way in. Oh, what a shame. Italians getting absolutely pulverized and encircled. They make a front line, but Z front line. And then X, push, and we already are on aggressive. Off they go. Ideally, as you push forward, you want your absolute best to try and get around the back of them. So it pinces through the front and see if we can get good, nice, round encirclements on them. The medium tanks are very fast and overrun. Nice. And another one. Down, down, down. I realize I'm doing this without air support as well. Impressive. Once again, we have some more Italian divisions here. And, oh my goodness, I forget how fast medium tanks are, you know. And, yeah, I think we take all of this. This is all mine now, right? What we'll stop doing now here, though, is stop attacking. Press H to hold. Stop the attack. And then put it on uh, balanced attack. Now, the beauty of balanced attack is if there's a front line without an offensive order, they won't move. But... In this case, if there is an offensive order, they will push. So this front line won't move, but this one will. And in this case, we just need to beeline to the victory points and the ports. And then it all goes back to the French. Oh dear, Italy dropping off all their best divisions. Very foolish. And encircled they are. Same again. Fleet. I brought them back because I want to save fuel. Right click on the dustbin. Boom. Okay. Strike force these areas to build naval supremacy to prevent the Germans from doing a naval invasion. Go disperse industry for more building slots and then construction focus. You can never have enough construction, right? Right. Right. So these troops are heading back south again. In this case, we can push directly into the Italian lines. I'm not even going to mess around. I'm just going to do the manual right click. So what I'm doing is right click to attack and hold shift to direct the order where they're going to go. So therefore, we can move around the AI and just get around the back and then make an encirclement, right? The ultimate goal of Hoi 4, making an encirclement to tank. Is there a greater experience than that? I don't think so. And another one down, and another one down. And medium tanks are so unbelievably fast. And I just encircle them all. I put them on aggressive again, push forward, and oh, what a shame. All encircled, all push forward. Control B, move to the front line, and look how fast that is. That moment when you realize, oh, look, we're making progress. And then they naval invade behind us. Okay, fair enough. We'll uh, fall back line, send a few of them back. They can take care of the African areas. And then these boyos, one take Tel Aviv. 
and another two can two, go to El Alamein, and we can push back into Libya again. Once again, you've got two options here. You can try and hold the coastline if you want to, or you can let the AR land on you, and you can make another encirclement. So people always give me a lot of flack in my videos. They always say, why don't you garrison the ports? The truth is, I like the AI to land, so I can push them back into the sea over and over again. Therefore, they've got less divisions. Less, therefore, in future, I don't have to deal with more divisions when I attack them on land or the more main areas. Trust me, it goes around, it comes around. It is worth it. It is all part of the plan. The amount of Italian divisions I've killed right now is nothing short of insane. So far, yep, 47,000 lost Germans and Italians. Also be aware, if you ever put them on aggressive, they will do crazy things like this. So just be aware of that. And they will try and like puncture out throughout the entirety of the world, which is a concern because they're going to try and encircle us right now. So that's going to be a problem. The Spyfall is complete. That's right. We have the Fighter 3 and uh, we've got that pretty much in 1940. So way ahead of time. So the fight is now for Germany. Do not stand chance. Oh no, you tried to encircle me. Nice try, bud. It's good to keep an eye on them. You will get overconfident in these situations, but trust me, just keep pushing and eventually you will do what you need to do and encircle those boyos. There we go. You're going to go here. You're going to go here. Push them back. Norway has capitulated. Whoops, I didn't defend Norway. Was that part of the plan? Mm. Right now, Italy is just losing so many divisions. They well and truly are the soft underbelly of Germany. Okay, to make things a little bit easier on this front line right now, because the AI is going to go nuts on me, so I'm just going to make another fallback line and just assign those guys. I control B and they'll shift to the front line. The Italians have got something about Tel Aviv. They just keep landing there over and over and over again. Once again, I have absolutely no problem with that. If you want to do that, feel free, go nuts. Uh, but I'm just going to encircle you over and over and over again and until there will be practically no Italian divisions left. Yeah, at this point, I just I tell them to attack, move by themselves, and at this point, they're just sweeping and clearing them up. Take Beirut and... Encircled once again. Low supply for the Italians. So the beauty of this is you could just do this over and over again, and the Italians will have practically no divisions. And that means one Axis member you have to deal with. And Germany also took forever to take out France. So this is a pretty weak Germany as well. This is not really looking too good for their potential Barbarossa. Barbarossa, you say? Well, I think that would make a very good second video. Right now, this video has been incredibly long, and you've had a lot of detail behind it. And if you want more detail, you want more love, you can uh, give me a like for part two. 15k likes, and I will make a part two for this video. I always keep my promises, okay? Did you like this video? Then you'll love this one. Thank you, and thank the sponsor for keeping my channel alive. Thank you so much, guys.